stop thinking about promoting yourself and just think about helping them do their job because their job isn't to promote you. They don't care about your business. They don't care about bringing you more customers or clients. They have a boss to answer to and they need to tell a story and it has to be newsworthy. So if you can help them do that, that's going to make you stand out. In Napoleon Hill's timeless classic, Think and Grow Rich, he defines a mastermind group as the coordination of knowledge and effort between two or more people for the attainment of a definite purpose. In this podcast, that coordination is created between you, me, and our amazing guests. Our definite purpose is achieving extraordinary results in your business and your life. I'm your host, Brad Mulvey. Welcome to the Millennial Mastermind Podcast. Hey guys, just a quick note before we get started here. We have a great episode here for you today with Christina Nicholson, but I do want to give you a heads up that there were a few audio issues on my end in the first part of the episode, so you'll hear a little bit of popping and crackling when I'm talking just in the beginning of the episode. But fortunately, Christina, the star of the show, sounds great. So I decided that it was not nearly enough to hold me up from posting this episode. So with that, enjoy this episode with Christina Nicholson. Welcome, folks, to the Millennial Mastermind Podcast. As you know, as entrepreneurs or future entrepreneurs, one of the keys to success is connecting with the right customers. I mean, when you really think about it, This is the main objective of any sales or marketing efforts. In today's conversation, we're going to explore a fascinating way to get exposure for your business so that you are able to attract the right customers at the right time. And to show us the way, we are joined by guest Christina Nicholson. Christina is a former TV reporter and anchor who worked in markets from New York City to Miami. And as we were uh, discovered just chatting here a few minutes ago, also from Ohio, which gets me excited. With her business, Media Maven, she helps entrepreneurs reach thousands, even millions of their ideal customers and clients in minutes instead of months through the power of media without spending the big bucks on advertising. This includes coverage in media moguls like Forbes, The Today Show, Washington Post, and more. Christina still appears behind the camera today and is also a contributing writer to Huffington Post, Inc. Magazine, and Fast Company. So with that, Christina, welcome to the show. Excited to have you here today. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here, especially since you are a fellow Buckeye. Yes, yes. I think that uh, it's a it's a widespread fanhood there. That uh, I'm glad that I am reaching you all the way in South Florida, but you still have your Buckeye roots. Gotta love it. That's right. That's right. So before we get too far down the road and into the weeds with media coverage and attracting media coverage. I would love to get some of your insights on where we even should start because it seems to be, you know, such a complex world for somebody who has really no background in that space and when we think about new businesses who are just getting off the ground it seems like a pretty daunting task to attract some of these larger media outlets to really want to want to give have coverage on what you're up to and what you're doing. So we'd love to get your insights on, you know, where do we even start to look for this type of stuff? Yeah. And you're totally right. Um, And for two reasons, one, which is valid and the other one, which is not valid. I'll start with the reason that is not valid. People put this idea of earning media on such a pedestal that they don't think it's obtainable for them. They think they need to be established with a big brand and already be making money and be super successful to get media coverage. And that is not the case. I have helped small business owners, even small business owners who haven't been making any money in their business, make um, money after they're earning publicity because that's how they are being introduced to people. So I just want to bust that myth that because I know people are listening right now and they're thinking, oh, but it's not for me. I'm not ready yet. If you're ready, to accept a new client or a new customer into your business, then you are ready for media coverage. Um, But you do need to have something to share with the media. 
and they're not going to promote you. That's the biggest mistake people make is they think it's the media's job to promote them and they think they're going to get a free commercial and that's not how it works. You actually have to have something newsworthy, some kind of story to tell. And, you know, we can talk about some examples and some work that I've done with um, small business owners as they start out, but you definitely need a jumping off point if it's not a website maybe a landing page, or even a Facebook page, something that's super easy to set up, somewhere that you have a presence. Because if you do want to pitch the local media to start, for example, and they Google you and they can't find anything, or they look at your website and it's super outdated, um, then they're going to think twice about promoting you because it's a reflection on them. And they definitely want to show, hey, we're bringing this person on because they're an expert in their industry. That's why we're interviewing them. That's why we're quoting them, whatever the case may be. So you do want to make sure you are set up already somewhere online in some way, shape, or form that if somebody did want to do their due diligence and check you out, you would do okay. Well, that's that, that that's timely that you mentioned that because we just posted an episode a couple of weeks ago, episode 111, with a gentleman named Mike Young who talks about visual branding. So I encourage anybody who is interesting interested in figuring out that visual brand before approaching the media to check out that episode to at least make sure you've got some web presence and it looks professional and and in the is in the fashion that it needs to be to attract these folks. So. Is there bad media or what quali- or if if so what qualifies good versus bad media or what should people be looking for? Okay, that's a good question because a lot of people too they get really nervous about earning media exposure. And this is why I actually tell the small business owner it's easier for you because let me tell you the bigger businesses they are so scared and so nervous that they are turning down a lot of opportunities or they're missing opportunities and that's because they are afraid of that bad media because again You're not paying for this coverage. You're pitching an idea and the journalist is going to do a story and they're going to include you in the story. So you don't get to see the story before it's aired or printed or published. Like you're just there because you're helping the journalist do their job and it's benefiting you. So great. Um, But a lot of these bigger businesses, you know, it's like, oh, if we do an interview, we need to go through the lawyers and we need to do this and that. And if you snooze, you lose. Like these journalists are on a deadline. So I think, I mean, obviously anything can turn from good to bad or from bad to worse, but you cannot think about that. Um, You just need to think, hey, this is my expertise, this is my product, this is my service, whatever it is you're promoting, and get the word out. And it may not be exactly the way you want. They may not show your face from the angle you wanted your face shown, (laughs) or they may not edit out, you know, the few times that you said, um, in the interview, but that's not what it's about. So you can't think like that. Um, So it's definitely something that you need And you need to ignore the fears of what it's going to look like when it's done because nine times out of 10, it's only going to help you because you're going to be reaching people that didn't know about you before. Sure. So I I love what you said there that you just got to get past that fear, get, put yourself out there, take advantage of these opportunities because they are out there. And let's dive into that a little bit. Where can we go to start looking for these opportunities and finding those reporters or those media outlets who are looking to feature somebody like those folks who are listening in their businesses and um, get a little bit of their insights and their expertise? Okay. So I think before we even reach out, we need to have a goal. We need to be strategic. We're not just going to throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and hope something sticks, which honestly is what many people do. And they end up wasting a lot of time because they don't slow to grow. So first, think about your goal. If you are a local business with a local brick and mortar, then you're going to want to get in front of local people. If you are an online business, then you're going to want something online or something, you know, like this on a podcast where anybody can listen anywhere. Um, Because you don't want to earn publicity and media just for the sake of it. You actually want to see a profit from the time and the effort that you're putting into it. So Mm -hmm. start with your goal. Where do you want to be? And then you branch out from there. Now, 
regardless of if you're online. Obviously, online and podcasts, yes, they're helpful. You reach more people. But remember, we talked about being newsworthy. And you are most newsworthy where you live. So even if you work with people all across the world, I would suggest starting local. Whatever your town is, if it's in Cleveland, Ohio, if it's in Columbus, Ohio, that's where you're going to have a better chance of earning coverage because you are the local entrepreneur to that area. So for example, if you live in Cleveland, Brad, people in Cincinnati aren't really going to care too much about what you're doing because you have no ties to Cincinnati. So you're more newsworthy in Cleveland. So, So I would start small, start in Cleveland and work your way out. And just like we talked about your goal. So if your goal is to reach parents in the Cleveland area, then I would be checking out what are moms reading? What are they watching? What are they listening to? Um, Moms are big on morning TV. So check out all of the TV stations in Cleveland and look at what they are airing in the morning because that's usually when they bring in the guests and they do the more fluffy news, not the hard news. And see what they're doing. Um, I can give you an example of how this worked for one of my media mentoring clients. Yeah, because this will help put it into perspective. So um, I have a media mentoring program where I kind of walk new entrepreneurs through the steps of becoming their own publicist. And this woman is based in San Diego and she wanted to work with more moms because she is a dietitian and her specialty is in kids and eating. So We were going to focus on San Diego. We looked at morning TV because that's what moms are watching. And we said, okay, we need to be timely. So that's another tip. You always want to be timely. That helps you with the newsworthiness because if you don't give the media a reason to do your story now, then they're not going to do it. They're just going to put it on the back burner. So we said, okay, it's back to school time. So let's do how to pack a lunch for a picky eater. Because a lot of moms can relate to the problem of their kids come home from school and they have their full lunchbox because they're not eating their lunch. So she pitched the idea and she said that she would come in with visuals. She would set up the table, show the food, because again, this is TV. And then she also included some stats in her pitch from, um, I think it was the American Academy of Pediatrics or something like that, where she talked about, you know, kids and picky eaters. And that showed that it was newsworthy. She had a credible source. Um, she had the visuals for TV. She was a local expert because she talked about how she was a dietitian and who she worked with. And she went in and she did a five-minute segment. They put her website at the bottom of the screen. They put the story on their website and they link back to her They shared it on social media. So just that morning, she got tons of hits. But then it extends for life pretty much because it's on their website. And she can use that on her website and on her social media and on her marketing materials. So that's an example of how you can just use your expertise locally, find something that is timely, why the media should do that story right now, and how you can pitch it with things like statistics to show that it is newsworthy and it does have legs to earn coverage. I love it. So if we have a business or an expertise that isn't necessarily something that's tied to something that's seasonal or really specific to time that, that timeliness factor... How can we think about making it timely to make sure that it doesn't get put on that back burner like you mentioned? There's a couple of ways. There's always ways to make it timely. You just have to be creative. And honestly, this is the hardest part. It's the hardest part of pitching is making something newsworthy. Um, One of my favorite things, and I work with a lot of uh, local restaurants and hotels and salons and spas in South Florida with my agency, and we love the awareness days like National Taco Day. So my Mexican restaurant is getting in the (laughs) newspaper with a taco special. And normally, they didn't care about this day. They didn't do anything for this day. But I told them, hey, we're going to have a special. It's going to be on a certain taco because I need to pitch it to the media and this is how we're going to get coverage. So those awareness days, uh, like National Taco Day, National Mac and Cheese Day, I mean, there's probably like five every single day. Jump on those because those definitely make it timely. And then you also want to pay attention to the news that's happening. Um, I'll give you an example of how this worked for me. 
this was, you know, back in the day was when I was on TV as a reporter. So I don't actually know if this person pitched himself or if somebody um, at the assignment desk was Googling an expert because it was when one of the stars from Glee overdosed on heroin and died. Everybody was doing that story. It was a national story, and that was when the whole heroin making a comeback from the 80s type of thing started a few years ago. And they said, okay, well, you're going to interview a doctor. He's an addiction specialist, and we're just going to localize the story. So that's an example of how something was already happening. This person was an expert in the industry, so he ended up earning media coverage. So pay attention to what's happening, not just locally, but nationally in your industry as it relates to your industry so you can jump on that opportunity. People are already covering it. They're already talking about it. So just reach out and say, hey, I know you're already covering this. If you need an expert to weigh in or you want to cover a different angle, please keep me in mind. I'm more than happy to help. Yeah, I love that. And there's a different national or international holiday. Like you said, there's probably five to 20 of them a day that uh, are pretty outrageous sometimes. So definitely going to be taking a look at that to see, you know, what's coming up in the next couple of months, if there's anything that is related. How, How far out do some of these media outlets plan their programs? Do we need to be reaching out If we're trying to be timely, should we be touching base with them months in advance? Or is it something that, oh shit, this is next week. We need to get somebody to fill this spot and talk about something interesting on the air. How does that work or has it worked from your experience? That's a great question. And it really varies. If you want to be in a glossy magazine, those work usually three months in advance. For example, I know Oprah's collecting her products for her favorite things list that comes out um, around Christmas time. She's getting all of that ready in August. So that's going to be your longest lead time. It's going to be about three months. Um, but I will also mention you rarely get, I shouldn't say rarely, but most of the time, I would say maybe 30 to 40% of the time you're going to get a media hit on your first pitch. Most Mm -hmm. of the time you need to follow up. And I suggest following up about once a week for a month. After a month, the timeliness has passed and you need a new pitch anyway. So just to give you an an example of how long the pitching process takes, you should give yourself a month to pitch one idea. Um, But long lead magazines, those are about three months. Um, When it comes to newspaper or local TV, I would do a week to two weeks in advance. Um, I have a TV segment coming up on Tuesday, and it was confirmed last week. So about a a week to a week and a half ago. Um, And then with online, I mean, obviously, you could write something today and get it up in 20 minutes. But um, most of the time, I would give it a week to two weeks. So Outside of timeliness, when we're... Thinking about contacting these different outlets, how would we go about finding the right person to talk to? Is there is this readily available information that we can go to the website of that um, news station or that online publisher or whatever it is and find the right person to reach out to? Or is there some digging that has to be done? Um. Well, sometimes yes and sometimes no. <laughs> I know, I know, I, I still get a lot of pitches um, from people, and all of those emails, they go to the email address that I created when I was in high school, and I rarely check just because most of them are garbage and I don't want them filling up my inbox that I actually use for work every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so to get that inbox that I use daily, I don't really put it out there. Um, so people, they really kind of have to hunt to find it. Now I will give you a tip that a lot of journalists are on Twitter. So if you get on Twitter and you search, you know, say you want to be in Forbes and you search Forbes, you can filter, you know, by people's bio, if they put that they're a Forbes writer in their bio. But I think the best way would be to go online and look at the stories that people are writing as it relates to your industry. Um, and then look at who's writing them. Most of the times their names are clickable. They're hyperlinked. And it'll either take you to their Twitter or it'll take you to a bio that may include an email address. And then there's also the contact section on the website that you can look at. And you can also call, like just call the station or the newsroom 
and say, hey, I want to send a pitch to so-and-so. Do you have their email address? And many times they will give you the generic um, newsroom email, which kind of goes to everybody. It's not really personalized. So if you can get that specific person, that's great. So I would suggest, again, Twitter is a big one, looking online at the articles and clicking on their name and looking at the contact section. Um, there are also, there's a soft, there's a few different softwares where you, you pay a lot of money for them and then you can get the contact information for everybody. That's something that I offer as a bonus in my media mentoring program, just because it is time consuming to actually find who to contact. Um, but again, you could even go to like a bookstore. I mean, there are still a few that (laughs) exist. You can go to a bookstore or a grocery store and pick up the magazines and just right on the inside cover, there's the names of the people who are contributing. You can look them up, find them on Twitter. Google is amazing, but yes, sometimes it is hard to find contact information just because people don't want to be bothered with pitches all day, every day. Mm-hmm. How about uh, help a reporter out or Harrow? I've heard of that one before just through the grapevine. Is that something, and for people who don't know, that's uh, a website that you can access online that reporters go to to help find experts for their stories. Is that a worthwhile outlet to look at when trying to get your name out there? That's a great question, and it is so hit or miss. Hmm. Harrow used to be amazing. Um, Up until a few years ago, you could go on there and it was like credible journalists with great outlets looking for experts. It has since been sold um, to one of the databases that I mentioned that have all of that contact information. And since then, they really let anybody and anybody post on there. Hmm. And it's really gone downhill because you'll get somebody posting on there looking for, I mean, Sadly, a big trend is a lot of these bloggers who have, you know, like two people viewing their blog, they'll post on there, they'll say they're doing a Christmas roundup, and they'll tell you to mail them all of their products to get included on the blog. When nobody's reading their blog, they just want a bunch of free crap. So that's something you run into there. Um, There's also, there's been a couple of times where I've responded to some for um, clients or I've passed some along to mentoring clients. And after you express interest in being included, they come back and they try to sell you an advertisement, which is totally against the rules. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to look for advertising opportunities on there. However, with that said, there are still some great outlets and great journalists who use Harrow to look for those expert sources. And I know many people who have gotten, myself included, my clients included, who have gotten great coverage by responding to Harrow's. Um, I would just suggest, because it, it is time consuming, you get three emails a day. And in those in one of those emails, there's 60 different topics where they're looking for experts in. So that's what is that? I'm not good at math. 180 or something? Yeah. Something. You're yeah, getting you're almost 200 people that are in your inbox. It's a lot to go through. So mm-hmm. you kind of want to skim it quickly. If you have an assistant, I would have an assistant skim it. There's a lot of people that they won't even tell you what the outlet is. They'll say um, anonymous. I wouldn't waste my time if they're saying anonymous. Now, sometimes they say anonymous because they're such a small outlet. They don't want you to know because they want you to respond. But sometimes they say anonymous because they're a big outlet and they don't want to get bombarded with tons of pitches because they're a big outlet. So I would say use it. That's a very long-winded answer to your question. (laughs) I would say use it, especially if you're starting out because you really don't have a lot to lose and you can get coverage. I know one person who like did a little experiment for a month. I think it was a month. Maybe it was even a couple of weeks. Um, I think it was a month. And he responded to every single Harrow that he could, you know, all the ones that were relevant. And in one month, Mm -hmm. he ended up getting 60 link backs, 60 pieces of coverage and 60 link backs. So yeah. So I mean, it definitely has its, its bonuses. A lot of people use it. So you definitely want to use it strategically. I have a blog post on my website um, on specifically how to use Harrow and get your responses used in media coverage um, because a lot of people use it. So you definitely want to stand out. So that's – if you want to see that, that's that's on my website, mediamavenandmore.com slash Harrow. Perfect. Yeah, we'll definitely link that up. Um, So 
I'm sure that when reaching out to a lot of these journalists, they're getting bombarded with different pitches and different um, opportunities every day. Is there anything that we can do to really stand out from the crowd and to make sure that we're catering towards their interests and something that's going to catch their eye? Yes. And I think the biggest thing, and it sounds so simple, but so many people miss this, is stop thinking about promoting yourself and just think about helping them do their job because their job isn't to promote you. They don't care about your business. They don't care about bringing you more customers or clients. They have a boss to answer to and they need to tell a story and it has to be newsworthy. So if you can help them do that, that's going to make you stand out. Um, I know many times when I work with um, clients or even myself, I will give the journalist everything they need on a silver platter. I mentioned the TV segment coming up. I write the entire script for the producer and I send it to them um, just because I know they're overworked and underpaid. That's just the way the media industry is today. Um, So if you can just do their job as much as their job you can for them, you are Mm -hmm. going to benefit. I know many times when publicists have reached out to me when I was in news and I would say, okay, great. We're going to do this. We'll be there in an hour. And they'll say, oh no, no, I'm not ready. I need to do this. I need to do that. It's like, sorry, then on to the next. Like I have a story that needs to be done at five. If you're not going to help me do it, then I need to move on. So if you can just come from a place of helping them do their job so you can get a mention here or there, that is where you are definitely going to get ahead. Make it as easy as possible. That makes a lot of sense. So, are there common mistakes that you see people making in this in their approaches to try to get media coverage? Because I'm sure that there's people who do it well, and then a lot of people who do it not so well. So, I'd love to hear what are the common pitfalls. Yeah, um, I'll mention a couple. The one I've already touched on: too promotional. Don't send me an email and say, I want to be on your podcast or I want to do this or I want to do that because I'm so amazing and this is why I'm so amazing. And then they try to like Mm -hmm. disguise, they try to disguise it as a story. And it's like, no, that's not a story. Everybody, for some reason, everybody thinks the way they started their business or the way they did something is so newsworthy when it's like the story is a dime a dozen. It's not that special. (laughs) So stop being promotional um, and stop emailing 100 people at the same time. That happens a lot. It's very obvious that I am one of 100 or even 500 people receiving the exact same email at the exact same time. Mm. So make it personal. And then lastly, I would say shorten it up. Um, Press releases don't work like they used to. That's because we don't have as much time as we used to. We don't want to read your long, boring press release. I can tell you most of the meaningful coverage I've earned clients has been with an email pitch that was four sentences long honestly. So if you can just get to the point, hey, this is a story. This is why you should do it. This is how I can help. Here's my email and phone number. That's all you need. So don't make it more complicated than it is. Well, this has all been super helpful so far, Christina. Before I ask the final question, where can people learn more about you, about what you're doing over at Media Maven? and uh, find out more information on on really how to take advantage of the opportunities that are out there with all of this different media coverage. Yeah. Well, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Christina all day. You can also find me on Facebook. If you just search Christina Nicholson, I'll pop up. Um, My website is mediamavenandmore.com. And if you head to mediamavenandmore.com slash publicity, I am getting ready to launch a brand new three-day video series that will help you pitch, get publicity, and land profit for free. So you can get access to that at mediamavenandmore.com slash publicity. That's fantastic. So before we uh, wrap it up here, are there any final pieces of advice that you would like to leave for our listeners who are super intrigued in this? They're, they're, their wheels are turning in their minds of how they can start to pitch the media, start to get featured on more things and linked back to their website and really blow it up. Anything that we haven't talked about today that you think uh, we should at least leave them with before we wrap up? 
We touched on it at the beginning and I want to remind them because I know right now they're thinking, I'll do that later. I'm not ready for that. And that's not true. You need to change your mindset because you are ready for this. How are people going to do business with you if they don't know about you? Mm -hmm. You need to put yourself out there to grow your business. Um, If you want a customer or client, they need to know, like, and trust you. And there is no faster way to reach more people to get known, liked, and trusted than earning coverage in the media. So I think this is definitely a strategy that all of your listeners need to put in place and they need to step out of their comfort zone. They're never going to grow a business in their comfort zone. I know a lot of people are uncomfortable with this idea, but again, people can't do business with you if they don't know you. And if you want to reach the most amount of people in the quickest way possible, this is the way to do it. I love it. Absolutely love it. I'm excited to start taking advantage of some of the opportunities that I've never even thought about, really. Uh, So thanks so much, Christina, for the time today. I think that this was a hugely uh, important conversation for us to share and and just great information for everyone who's listening and myself included to know about. So appreciate your uh, generosity with your time and sharing your your expert industry knowledge so that we can take advantage of all the great opportunities that are out there. No, thank you so much for having me, Brad. And go Bucks. (laughs) Go Bucks.